What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for March 26th, 2024. The big server meshing test ran this weekend, and we'll talk about it. We had an update on the new personal hangers, and 323 is feeling a ways off. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week, put them into one video, and share some of my opinions about it. I also live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash SaltyMike, and you guys have been stopping by and being awesome. So thank you for that. Keep it up. But we have a lot to get through this week, so let's start out with the patch updates. All right, and we'll start out on Thursday. We didn't get really anything all week because the Evo builds kept failing. But first off, I was unable to cover Sunday's Evo patch in last week's Week in Review. And this patch basically is the same thing. It only has a couple differences, but not much. The focus was on stability, but... Yeah, the known issue showed us that there was a crash that would happen whenever a ship weapon was damaged. So we basically had really bad stability and were asked to do nothing. For feature updates, the character creator had some color finally. It was black and white on Sunday, and it was a lot more fun to play with. EVA had some very minor fixes, but still super broken. Tons of T-posing animations, weird stuff. And there is now the new loot UI being added to some of the ships uh, down below or on the screen that are being mentioned here. But even they barely worked. For example, the Vulture had no inventory at all when I clicked on the uh, inventory location that was added to it. So all in all, not a very exciting Evo patch with very little of the features turned on or were ready for testing at all, let alone feedback. So I'm thinking this is a ways off before we get it. Then we had overdrive phase two, and this was a big nothing burger. In this phase, you literally just have to kill a couple ships and they increase in difficulty for three different missions instead of five, which we had in phase one. And it's basically a bounty where when you kill the ship, it will drop a key. You have to then deliver that key to an admin office on a station and you're done. Uh, very little story here added to the phase uh, because when you complete the mission, you learn nothing about what you learned. This was my critique about phase one, uh, but we'll likely learn more in phase three about what we uncovered here in phase two. So the only way to really follow the story is to read the mission description and it's not really adding much. Then the big stuff, weekend server meshing test in Stanton alone, no jump points, just in Stanton and the test went well kind of it works i was able to log in most times i was able to get into a server outside of a weird little edge cases the transition from one server to another in a ship was fairly seamless missions are pretty broken uh the server performance is awful on the servers that haven't just spooled up in many cases inputs are seconds and on high pop servers minutes of delay uh, i died four minutes five minutes after actually dying on a 400 pop server not good sometimes just the planets were a server and others and space was another so there was two servers that were running these were on the 200 pop servers and in others some were like moons were servers planets were servers it, it was hard to tell uh what was what uh evo chat i think they were telling them the configs uh but please understand me we are one year since 318 and we're talking about playing with server meshing i never thought we would be here a year ago this is amazing but also this was the first test and it shows right they said there are going to be many tests to come and we need those tests the 200 player shards were like okay-ish but almost zero gameplay systems worked and anything over that we really started to see some major issues i was on an 800 player uh shard today sunday when this is being recorded and the delays with inventory and in general interactions were unplayable I am not complaining. I am so happy with how they're going about this. This is in the test preview channel, right? This is the point of it to avoid 318 from ever happening again. This test is like 318 was on live in many ways, but this will never make it to live in this way because of this new initiative. So props to them for that. So it doesn't matter how broken it is. And hopefully the data they gather is actionable, right? Uh, and the next test is a little bit better. And the one after that, even more. But for the first test, I would say this is a small success, but the real success will come with improving on it next time. And the last thing I wanna say about this is I showed a clip where ships that 
we, like we were all in a group around Selen and they disappeared. They just hoofed into thin air. And hours later, a member of our group found them around Selen. That means the replication layer is working very well. And that's what's coming in the short term. That's what's coming in 323. That's what we need to work well. Meshing just needs to show its potential. And I would say it did. Next up is Roadmap Roundup, a bit of a short one, but not without things that are worth discussing. And sadly, the first thing worth talking about is a feature that won't make it into 323, and that is unique item recovery or the system that will allow you to no longer lose your subscriber items, paints, and other things you paid money for. Uh, and it won't be in 323. This is not, not a good thing, right? But at the same time, I think it's always kind of was a temp solution to a problem that they need to solve. And that's the way they do cosmetics. It's just not ideal. And we would, we need it to change, uh, which will likely solve this problem altogether. Maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe not. Maybe it'll just cook for a little while and we'll get it in 323.1. Who knows? Now committed for 323 is, well, one thing that we talked about last week, the character customizer, and not much to add here on this, reputation hostility is in one of the cards to actually be there, and I absolutely can't wait to see how it works outside of master modes and the cargo kind of hanger changes. This is going to be the largest change we see in Star Citizen. I cannot wait to see what it means for Grimhex to enforce its own laws as they described here. And lastly, dynamic crosshair, which is, uh, I felt pretty iffy about it when then I tried it on Evo, and it's not bad, and I'm curious on kind of what helmets this is on and more importantly which one it's not and then added to release view uh it's the last thing it's the hot topic the hornet mk2 uh was just added to the list of ships on the 322 release view And then for video updates, we had an inside Star Citizen titled To and Fro with Cargo. And now they've done quite a bit of discussions around the new personal hangar system. But let's start out with a refresher on what they are because they give some interesting details on how they work in patch 323 as well. A persistent hangar is an instance hangar that is going to be assigned to you whenever you select your home location when logging into the game for the first time for a patch. When that happens, what we do is we determine the largest ship that you have and then entitle to you a persistent hangar that's of the size needed to facilitate that ship. Whenever you go into that hangar into the game, that hangar at your home location is always your hangar and you'll be able to use it like your home. You'll be able to keep things in the hangar. You'll be able to leave things around. You can invite friends in. You can treat it like your own little oasis. All right, so a lot more to unpack there than I expected. Your hangar will be the size of your largest ship first and foremost, and it seems like that cannot change until the next patch. So the question stands, what happens when you only have one small ship, but you earn a large one in game? Where does that ship spawn? I will ask this question if we get an SCL uh, with the hangar guys next week. I'll put it in the thread and we'll see what happens. Next, they describe in detail how we will interact with the hangar, specifically the freight elevator, and we get a little sneak peek on something I was dying to see. What we're gonna do is allow you to call anything in your inventory up via that freight elevator. You can pick it up off the freight elevator either with your hands or using the tractor beam and just screw it about your location however you pick. Also in the hangars, you'll notice several new kiosks. We have the freight elevator kiosk, which has a brand new uh, UI and uh, inventory system to deal with uh, large volumes of cargo. You're going to have on the left hand side a section that is showing the contents of the platform itself. And on the right hand side, similar inventory layout with all your armor and weapons and items. And then you decide what you want to spawn in, um, in the freight elevator. The freight elevator then comes up and then you can start doing like loading and unloading of various cargo into your ship and so on. If you're considerate about how you're loading things and you're trying to optimize your loading times, it'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on the platform to make your multi-crew loading as streamlined as possible. And anything that's in your inventory, you're gonna be able to call up 
Some things you might have to put into an inventory container box. We're talking eight, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections, transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. That look at the kiosk UI was pretty awesome, and it seems also kind of unpolished, but functional. Exactly what we re what we need right now, right? And just in case you missed it, because I did when I first watched, you can purchase up to 32 SEU containers that are empty, and you can place items inside them. Also, those mole bags were not just a thing for the video. I've seen them for sale in the Evo patches, so expect that in 323. And then they talked about item banks. In your personal hangar, you'll also have access to several other kiosks, starting with the item bank. Which are another form of kiosk, which you could almost consider like a small freight elevator in a way, in that you can retrieve personal items, such as clothing, armor, and weapons. Because the item that's being delivered will be delivered in a tray that's in the same machine. So you interact that kind of like you interact with a loot box and you get that out. So no other player can actually physically get anything from your local inventory. And uh, these item banks can be found not just within the hangars, but also the wider location, such as your hubs and other key areas of a location to retrieve um, your personal items. Since you can't interact with, the, with your inventory anymore at any given time, it means like we need to have enough item banks around each location so you don't block each other um, from accessing an, an, a terminal, right? It's just a quicker way to get a quick gun or a few meta pins or your armor without having to load it up from the freight elevator. Okay, so they want to do away with us just pressing I and having a magical inventory wherever we go. And this is our bank box and any other MMO would be these item banks, right? So it's a pretty standard thing. And I like that they're placed all over, but it's certainly a smaller step back in terms of convenience for the sake of immersion. But I'm okay with that. Uh, Aesop Terminals was probably the most surprising discussion on the show for me. And the last kiosk that I want to talk about is the Aesop Terminal which we have positioned in the hangar, so you can request your ships from within the hangar and not just the spaceport. So they will still remain in the spaceport, so if you don't have a personal hangar in your location, you can request your ship also from there. What we're doing is we're changing the way that the ships spawn in the game. You can now request your ships from within the hangar and they will appear to you, but they won't just come out of thin air. What happens is the whole of the floor will open up. You get this like amazing view of the, of the hangar, the lights dim, the doors open. And the landing platform will be rising up towards you and your ship will be there. We try to balance it in a way that it doesn't take too much time for you, but also that it feels like it has the right weight to it, but also you don't have to wait for it too long. So now you have a seamless transition and a realistic way of storing your ships away. Additionally, you can do clever things like call up a smaller vehicle, such as a ground vehicle, drive it off, and then call up a larger vehicle. Then you'll have access to your ground vehicles without having to go to another location. You'll be able to call up multiple ships and maybe have one person fly off with one ship, call another one, have another person in your party fly up with another ship or you can just call up a ship, change your mind, and then call up a different ship without having to leave or anything like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And I can already tell what some of you are thinking right now. We're not going to let the system like eat your body and store it into the inventory or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure to account for that such that if there's a blocking change that happens, we'll stop the process go back up to the default state and then tell the player about the issues so that they can account for it. If you do want to jump in to the platform just before it closes and fall to your death, you can fall to your death if you want to. I love this. Uh, elite fans are probably laughing a little bit about it, but this feature is also a solution to us not being able to spawn ground vehicles in freight in the freight elevator, right? So that kind of came off the roadmap, but they had a workaround for us. Uh, and they're just letting us do it with the ship terminal, which is awesome. One thing I really want to see is a feature in the original hangar. And honestly, in the freight elevator, if you could own a larger hangar, it would be nice to spawn three or more ships at one time for an org or something. And then lastly, they discussed the feature that is most polarizing, actually. 
Another thing that we've talked about is automated loading in the games. This allows you to still do commodity trading without needing to actually move the boxes yourself. It will be an option in the commodity terminal. Whenever you go and you pick the destination inventory, you'll be confronted with several options. One is the location inventory. The next will be all your ships that are at the location. If you choose a ship, you'll have the option to have it be automatically unloaded or loaded for you, of course, with an added cost. The ship has to be stored to allow for the transfer, and it will be time-locked while that transfer is occurring. Different locations in the game will have different amounts of time. Places that are more optimized for trade are going to allow for faster transfer. You'll be able to still do the trading. You just have to wait a little bit and pay a bit more money, so your profits won't be quite as good in that case. Once the automatic loading process is finished, you can just go to the ASOP terminal, in the hangar, access it, raise it, and go off, and you're on your way. One thing I didn't notice the first time I watched, but keen-eyed viewers on my React channel saw that the price was slightly different, about 100 alpha UEC versus the commodity sale and the automated loading costs. I love this system. I'm a fan of refineries in Star Citizen, and these times so far seem very reasonable for cargo, but a lot more is kind of a lot more info is needed uh, in relation to cargo trading, outposts, missions, and more, and how all this is going to work. And then we had a Star Citizen Live character customizer question and answer. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a character customizer in a first-person game. There wasn't a lot to add here at all. Uh, link is in the description, but we will not be covering this episode on today's review. All right, and as always, with other updates, we start out with a sneak peek, and I have absolutely no idea what this is. It is very clearly a part of a ship, and naturally, with the big sale coming in May, we can expect to see a few more ship sneak peeks, I assume, but I'll leave it down in the comments. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't follow all the ship sale news that much, so what the heck is this? Maybe you guys know what it is. Then, lore makers, question and answer. There's not a ton to share here. Sometimes there's a few good tidbits there, so again, link will be in the description, but most of the posts aren't very gameplay related this time, so the one that I think is, and they discuss, it's very obvious, but the change in size of the pyro system. It's two times the size of Stanton, but it was originally supposed to be much larger, but come on, the scale of these systems is already insane. They don't have to be that much bigger. I think they learned their limitations as well on maybe what the engine can do, and when the initial pyro lore was created, that wasn't really a thing. I don't think the seamless game was either, even at that time. So that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and uh, yeah. As always, if you are enjoying the videos, make sure you like them, <laughs> make you sure you subscribe and leave comments down below. As always, it's been uh, a really great time here and I've really enjoyed making the videos and I've really enjoyed all the interactions around the channel lately as things have been doing um, or, or have been a little bit more professional. So as always, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about anything we discussed today and I will catch you next week.